Hey y'all, it's Rachel here with Scientifically Engineered and I wanted to go ahead and keep on my word and try and get my October Currently Inked um, started uh, actually at the beginning of October rather than at the end so I could give you some sort of a report at the end of the month for how it went. Um, so yeah, so I'm starting a new ink journal. I'm going to try and keep all of my weekly inks in this journal so I can look back uh, and have a little bit better of a uh, catalog of what I've had inked. So this is a 2024 Hobonichi Weeks Mega. I'm not actually using the dates, um, but maybe it would have been a good idea to use the dates. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll stop on the 1st of January. I'm not quite sure yet. That actually might be a good idea. Luckily, there's a lot of extra pages in here, so I'll go ahead and go to the back. Apparently, I'm just thinking while, while working. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll move some of these guys out of the way. So I wanted to keep a bit of a um, autumn, fall theme going on here. It's not perfect, um, but I think you'll see kind of what I was trying for. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So first off in a Twisby Eco 1.1 stub, is my all time probably favorite ink ever. So the ink is a sailor ink, which always makes me sad to say because they are not budget friendly. And that makes me sad. <laughs> so this is Sailor Ink Studio um, 280. This is a chromo shading ink. It's a green that shades like yellow with like, I don't even know, even maybe a little pink in there. It is an awesome ink. Um, but this is, I believe a 20 mil bottle and 280 is the number it is. And I think this is like a 20 mil bottle and it's about $13. Like that's the cheapest I can find it, which is, obscene in my opinion <laughs> unfortunately because as you'll be able to see as it dries lots of really beautiful chromo shading going on there uh the pen is a twisby eco transparent yellow with a 1.1 stub uh twisbys have really good stub nibs in my opinion they're very smooth so i like them a lot in fact i have another one that i'm using this month um I started this hobby like late 2020. I've always been into pens and stationery, um, but actually using fountain pens late 2020, early 2021. So I've definitely missed out on a lot of the early colors of the Ecos. Um, one that I've seen that people have that I'm scouring the internet for is neon green. I have a neon yellow one that's almost green or lime green. Um, I'm not actually sure which color it is, but it's not quite the lime green, but it's fun. They're a good price, great quality. And, um, yeah, not really sure what else to say about it. So this is transparent yellow. So I thought this kind of signified changing of leaves. Um, I live in California and here. Uh, our leaves are not yellow or red <laughs> at all, but they might be green starting to turn yellow. So you can kind of see there that fun color. Okay, next up, I had some sort of an order going. Let's see if I keep to it. Uh, this is the Pelican M400 white tortoise shell. Um, this pen actually is perfect for this ink. So <laughs> I'll be switching the inks the next time I ink this pen. Uh, but for this time around, um, I have it inked with Robert Oster Tea Time. Robert Oster Tea Time is an exclusive ink to, um, goodness, why am I blanking? To Endless Pens out of, I think they're out of Tampa. And I think it's one of their Hatch inks. It, there's a pack of six. You can buy them individually, but it, it came out as a set of six. 
um, that are all kind of related to sort of cozy uh, time, fun stuff like that. So there's like old book smell, um, uh, what is it, warm kitty, soft kitty, um, crackling campfire, and stuff like that. So really fun. This is my favorite ink, I think, from that one. I really like my greens. This ink, and maybe one day I'll do a, a, an ink comparison, it's very similar. And honestly, I don't know that I could even tell the difference between this ink and Robert Oster Saguaro Green, which is a another exclusive, but for a different, but for pen chalet, not for endless pens. So if you have that ink, I don't know that you would need both. Like I said, this is the Pelican, Pelican, Pelican. I don't know, I'm not German. Uh, M400, the number refers to the size, the smaller the number, the smaller the pen. So I think it goes M2, there might be an M100, but I think M200, 400, 600, 800, and 1000, I think is what they are. And they consequence, consequently go up in price as well um with the larger pen so this is a medium i don't know that white tortoise shell or white green tortoise shell whatever i said first off for this pen i think white white tortoise shell i don't think this comes in anything other than the m400 but it, it does come in rollerball and ballpoint um and this is the one i like the most i got this pen a long time ago in extra fine and it was so scratchy. I think that the nib was misaligned, but it's an expensive pen. It's the only gold nib pen I think that I own. And so I was like, I don't want to mess with it. So I ended up returning it to where I got it from. Um, how do you spell tortoise? But this is a medium and it is so smooth and bouncy and it's a dream. Honestly, I love it. I'm more of a steel nib than a gold nib kind of girl, but for the Pelican M400, what I really like about it is it's not super round. The nib has like a tiny bit of stubbiness to it. This is not a stub, it's a medium nib, but it just has the slightest stubbiness to it. So I feel like the bounciness of the nib gives me the kind of line variation that I like because I like more stub nib pens. I like my downstrokes to be a little bit wider and a little bit sharper, crisper upstrokes. So I really like it. It's a piston filler. This one's pretty tiny, uh, but I don't think it's uncomfortable. Um, and the clip is like a pelican beak. Isn't that cute? I love this pen. Ink's beautiful, um, but again, if you've got saguaro green, I don't think you need both. Okay, next, what do we do? I'm gonna go out of order. Um, this is a Narwhal Nautilus or Narwhal Voyager. This was from Pen Chalet. This was another exclusive. I think it's called Arizona Skies and it's out. They don't have any more. They ran out. What is that called? Out of stock. <laughs> um, but I don't think that they'll be getting any back. Um, so you might be able to find this guy uh, secondhand though. Um, it's a beautiful pen. I think it's cute that it kind of follows like the sand, there's some red in there for the clay, green for the cactuses, and then blue into maroon for like water in the night sky. I really, I think it's beautiful. Um, this is a fine nib, and I already forgot what I was doing over here. <laughs> so this is actually Lamy. Let's focus. Um, and this is their Tourmaline. Can you see that? I got a couple inks from Lamy. I don't know how to spell Tourmaline. Um, on sale, like really good sale. So I was like, okay, I'll try them out. I had used Vibrant Pink before, but um, that was a long time ago. And I didn't realize this, but the bottles do not say their names on them. The caps are the color, but they don't say the name. So for a long time, I thought Lamy Tourmaline was Lamy Turquoise, and it's not. <laughs> They're different inks. Anyway, not that it matters. That's my own problem, but 
that's annoying. Why did they do that? I don't know. Um, and tourmaline, I think, is exceptionally better than turquoise. Tourmaline has some sheen to it. I think it's a nicer blue. And I don't know if it's bottle specific. Like, I don't know if I got a bad batch of turquoise. But it was so poorly behaved on all paper, even to my river. It was really badly behaved. But tourmaline is fine. It's pretty wet. It'll feather a little bit on some pages, but on some certain types of papers. But, but it behaves normally, in my opinion. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't have a lot of Lamy inks. Um, I do have some of their crystal collection. Those inks are really nice. Same thing though. I don't think that those have the names on the packaging. So it's like, if you don't keep the box, but even the box, I don't think. I don't know. I'm, on, I'm ranting. I think this is a Voyager. Or is it Nautilus? I don't know. I don't know if they know. Uh, but it's Pin Chalet, so I'll just go P Chalet, exclusive, and then I think it's called Arizona Skies. They had another one, um, I forgot what it was called, but it was like red and orange. It was very beautiful as well. That one sold out immediately. I didn't even get my hands on that one. Um, oh, we need to say what this is. This is a fine. Um, the only thing I don't like about the Voyager is that you can't cap this pen. And I'm a serial capper, but it's not going to happen. Um, it is a beautiful pen, though. Piston filler. Okay. What's next? Next, we have a repeat. It's my favorite pen. What do you want from me? Uh, this is the Esterbrook SD. Um, it's an oversized pen. It still caps. It's a little bit goofy. I don't think it's supposed to cap it. You can cap it. Um, and this is the Rocky Top uh, with a journal or nib. It, you just can't get any better than that. I'm sorry. This is just the best pen ever. Okay. Um, last, what, what did I have this inked with last month? See, that would be nice to have like a consecutive ink journal so I could just flip back. Um... It was another orange ink. I think it was Tachia Koyame Esterbrook because I think I had it inked with that for a while and that's one of my favorite inks so it would make sense. This month I have it inked with Arizona Copper which is another beautiful um, ink. This is OS. I think this pen just has to be inked with like a lovely orange yellow brown color to do its to do it justice. Oh my goodness. Look, I've done it backwards. No one told me. Oh no, that's okay. One day. One day I'll get it down, y'all. One day. Okay. <laughs> backwards. Uh, this is, what did I say this is? This is Robert Oster. This is another Pen Chalet exclusive. I like my exclusives. What can I say? And this is Arizona Copper. I have a couple bottles of this. Actually, you might even want to, if you enjoy this color, you might want to check because for a while, Pen Chalet had it on like really good sale. Like it was like 12 bucks, I think. And then um, you can like stack discount codes if you have a discount code. Um, and it's a good ink. I mean, it's a typical Robert Oster. It behaves like a typical Robert Oster. Uh, well behaved. I will say it looks very different depending on the kind of pen that you had, have it in. Last month I had it in a really, really wet writer and it's like a dark brown. This month it's pretty light. So it's definitely one of those that shades and sheens very differently depending on the pen that it's in. But I always like it. Warm tone browns, love them. Especially in this pen. I can hear my cat out there which means that she might be up to no good so this we might be speeding up right now um next i have another twisby eco this is heat which looks similar to but is a little bit oranger than saffron it's another 1.1 stub 
and I went a little bit crazy on the ink for this one. So let's see, can you see, can you even see me writing right now? Oh yeah, I hear nutmeg coming. Oh, it's Lotus, she's got a bug. Oh no. All right, let's see if we can get through this. I don't like bugs. Um. <laughs> anyway, this ink, I went a little bit crazy here. I'm not sure how the orange and green is gonna go together, but I felt like it, so I did it. So this is the Yoseka um, Ceramics ink. And this is Tongmi Se Blue. Do you hear a lotus? Oh my goodness. I always feel like I admire uh, people who make videos who have kids because I can't even do it with my cats. Tongmi Se Blue. Um, this is definitely green, but it's kind of the color of like the ceramic green blue, which is I think the goal, um, kind of that like, oh, I don't know how to explain it, blue green, I guess. And again, I'm not sure about this pen ink combo. It's a little weird, but I wanted to use this ink and I wanted another stub. And so here we are. I'm realizing up here I wrote 1.1 studio instead of stub. Goodness gracious. Okay, and this is the heat. Um, Tommy Say Blue is actually a really pretty color. Um, there's a little bit of different shading in there. Um, I don't know how fall it is, but a fall winter ink nonetheless. And then lastly, I needed a little bit of a gray in here and I wanted to use my uh, Opus 88 demonstrator. This is the Medusa. Um, you got little snakes there on the finial. And on the bottom, you have the Endless logo. This is a Endless Hatch product uh, with Mica Fines. And it's beautiful. It's an Opus 88. Well, I, don't, I guess it's not a demonstrator because it's not see-through, but I think that this model is called the demonstrator. I don't know, someone let me know. Anyway, beautiful pen. Uh, it's an eyedropper. I have it eyedroppered. And um, I will say this is my springiest steel nib. In fact, I would say it's probably as springy as the Pelican, which is crazy. Um, I have it inked with one of my favorite inks. This is Birmingham uh, Pinco. And this is Armadillo. Uh, do I like it just because of the name? Yeah, maybe. That might be a huge piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I might not like this ink if it wasn't named Armadillo, but it is named Armadillo. So, yeah. It is a beautiful ink. It's a chromo shader. It's weird. Um, it looks different on different paper, but also, like, it's pretty typical to see an ink that goes down a different color than it dries. Platinum has inks like that. There's a lot of inks that do that. This ink... I'll come back like a week or two later and it'll be way darker, way different color. So it's very interesting. When I first put it down on the paper, I see it as pretty pink, like like decently pink, mauve-ish. It's obviously a gray ink, but it's coming off pretty pink. But um, when it dries and like as time goes on, it turns into like pretty much standard gray with some purple undertones. It's so odd, but I love it. Um, so this is the Opus 88 Medusa. It's got a medium nib and it's super bouncy, but I swear that this is, you can buy this one with a gold nib. This isn't the gold nib though. This is the stainless steel nib. And it's just so bouncy. I don't, I don't know. Like you can get decent variation I don't know. If you like bouncier nibs, uh, but you want to stay in a stainless steel price point, uh, this pen is doing it for me. Unless they accidentally gave me the gold nib, but I don't think so, because they usually stamp those nibs. But as you can see here, it's kind of pink. All right, Lotus attacked my video. <sighs> I'm back. Okay. <laughs> what I was saying was, it's got a pink undertone, but as it dries, it gets grayer and the undertone turns a bit more purple. 
and as time goes on it gets grayer and grayer even weeks out so here's my final color palette I definitely could have put some more oranges in there um, I do have a pen that's pretty perpetually inked with Ferro Swill Press pumpkin patch um, but the, this was kind of this is what I'm gonna try and use up this month so that's what I'm gonna have as my currently inked let me know if you've got any of these pens or if you're interested in any of these. I think my, what I'm most excited for this month, oh goodness, what is it? It's probably gonna be the Twisby Eco just because I really love that 280 color. But I am a little excited to use my Pelican as well. So we will see. All right, so. That's what we're looking at here for the beginning of October. I'll get back to you with how it goes, if anything comes up in the month or if they all behave well, we will see how it goes. All right. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.